Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. My name is McCade Marshall and this is Word of the Week. Word of the Week is a short video I shoot every single week for my readers and viewers. So thank you for tuning in today. At the end of this video, if you enjoy this message, I encourage you to share it with family, with friends, with loved ones, and with your coworkers. And you can do that simply by simply copying the link to this video and emailing it, or you can share it on Facebook or Twitter or any of your favorite social media sites. Also, I have a YouTube channel on youtube.com that you can check out and watch more videos. And you can make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel there. And I have a website, mccademarshall.com. And I have a lot of great resources on there. And you can actually fill out a form on mccademarshall.com to receive Word of the Week every week in your email inbox. So make sure you check those out at the end of this message. Well, the Word of the Week for this week is baptized in the Spirit. And in the scriptures, followers of God would often physically wash themselves with water in order to make, be made pure or to be made right with God. It was an actual external act of obedience to God. We see this ritual all the way back in the book of Leviticus with the Levitical priests. In Leviticus 16.24, it tells us that the Jewish priests had to actually wash their bodies in water, dip in water, before they could make sacrifices required by the law to God. It was required for them to wash themselves. And in the New Testament, we see another form of this when John the Baptist began his public ministry of preaching repentance, and then he would physically water baptize people. He would immerse them in water and raise them up. As a, as a symbol of their repentance. So John the Baptist demonstrated this physical baptism as a sign of repentance while ministering at the Jordan River. And while these things were great and they're good, they're still just an external act. They're an external act of obedience. So uh, the important thing to remember is God is not just interested in our outward physical baptism. He loves, God does love baptism and he ordained it. But physical immersion in water or baptism, while it is very important, it is not salvation. Physical baptism is not going to save you. What's going to save you is a person's faith in Jesus Christ. It's, it, water baptism means nothing if a person's heart is not committed to God. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul compares outward obedience to God without inward care for God as meaningless. The Bible tells us in Romans 8, 28 through 29, For you are not a true Jew just because you were born of Jewish parents or because you have gone through the ceremony of circumcision. No, but rather, a true Jew is one whose heart is right with God. And true circumcision is not merely obeying the letter of the law. Rather, it is a change of heart produced by God's Spirit. And a person with a changed heart seeks praise from God and not just from people. In other words, our relationship with God is not merely based on ritual or external practices. While being physically water baptized is extremely important and is an expression of our faith, salvation happens the moment we believe and ask Jesus to come abide in us. It's instant. And a great example of this instant salvation in G by having faith in Jesus is from the thief on the cross when Jesus was being crucified. And when Jesus was being crucified, he had a, cross, a thief on his right side on another cross, and he had a thief on his left side being crucified. And one of the thieves mocks Jesus and says, save yourself. And the other thief says, Jesus, remember me in your kingdom. And Jesus says, I tell you, truly, you will be today with me in paradise. You are coming to heaven today after you die. And so we see this thief was never water baptized. He was never anything. All he had time to do was die. And that was it. And the, I believe God put that intentionally in the scripture to, to show us 
by mere confession of Jesus Christ and believing in him, that's when salvation happens. That's how you get to heaven. It cannot be earned. It cannot be bought with money. Salvation is purely based on faith in Jesus Christ, and that alone is what saves you. And so we see a transition from physical water baptism in the New Testament to also having spiritual baptism when we see the transition from John the Baptist ministry to the ministry of Jesus Christ, who set the new standard, who set the new covenant. John the Baptist had a water baptism, but he talked about someone coming, the Messiah, our Savior Jesus, who was much greater and would baptize in a much different way. And he's, John the Baptist tells his followers in Matthew 3, 11, I baptize you with water with, for those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, speaking of Jesus. So much greater that I'm not even worthy to be a slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And as we read on in the New Testament after the four Gospels, we see this spiritual baptism, this prophetic word John gave, fulfilled. And we see it on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after the Passover, Jesus said, I'm going to bring my spirit. Wait in Jerusalem for my spirit. And in Acts chapter 2, the scriptures give a detailed account of how the Holy Spirit came, and it describes it being like a whirlwind, and, it, and that whirlwind comes and it fills the first, the first apostles and early disciples of Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with its power. And when the Holy Spirit comes like this whirlwind, I can't imagine. I'm sure it was so dramatic and awesome. It says the disciples began to speak in various tongues. And people from various nations were in Jerusalem at that time that spoke different languages. They were from all over the world, and they were in the room as well when Pentecost came. And they were actually able to understand in their own native tongue what the disciples speaking in tongues were saying. They could understand in their own language the awesome acts of God being declared through the people who were speaking in tongues that were foreign to them. And so we see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, these people being baptized in the Spirit, and they start praying in tongues uh, pretty far out, right? And they can understand them because it's the Holy Spirit manifesting and working in itself through them. They had done nothing externally. It was an internal thing manifesting itself outwardly. So then we see, so what is baptized in the Holy Spirit? What does that even mean? And how is it different than water baptism? And the simply put, the simple answer is, water baptism is a physical thing, while baptism of the Spirit is spiritual. Water baptism is an outward expression of our faith in God and is an act displaying our repentance. Spiritual baptism is an inward baptism and manifests itself from within, working itself out. The inward spiritual baptism of the Holy Spirit is what gives you and I the power to overcome in this life. Jesus tells us in Acts 1 verse 8 before he departed, he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and Israel, and to the ends of the earth. So the early disciples receiving the Holy Spirit was so critical to the gospel message of salvation. Receiving the Holy Spirit is still just as important today as it was back then. The Holy Spirit was the display of God's power in people's lives. The Holy Spirit is God's power that lives inside each and every Christian believer. The Holy Spirit had and still has the power to heal, the power to restore, and the power to perform the miraculous. It happened back then and it still happens today. God's Spirit cannot be bought with money and it cannot be earned with good deeds or rituals or righteous acts, but rather the Holy Spirit is, re is received by faith. And when you come to Jesus Christ by faith for salvation and eternal life, 
You are guaranteed to receive the Holy Spirit as a deposit in your heart, in your spirit. And when you come to Christ, you have supernatural power living inside of you. But like a watering well where you have to pull up the bucket to get the water, you have to draw up the power of the Holy Spirit to see its power at work. And Mark 1 verse 8 in the scriptures promises that Jesus will baptize us with the Holy Spirit when we come to him in faith. If you have never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, or you have never really experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, today is the perfect time to come to Jesus and experience this awesome power of God from heaven. So I want to pray over you really quick that you would just receive this message of being baptized in the Spirit, to receive the Holy Spirit, to encounter more of the power of God in your life. So wherever you are, if you want to bow your head and close your eyes and listen along, I just want to pray over you really quick that you would get this message deep into your heart this week. Father God, thank you so much for the gift of the, your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, that you said when we accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior that we would not only be water baptized physically, externally, but also that you would pour out your Holy Spirit and we would be baptized spiritually speaking. That we wouldn't be Jewish, so to speak, or a believer externally, but we would be Jewish inwardly. We would have a believer's heart. We would have hearts that are turned towards you. And so, Lord, that's what it means to be baptized in the Spirit, to have the power of God clothed on our lives so that we can minister, not with our own strength, but with power that runs through us. Lord, we have supernatural power at our disposal to use as you lead us, Father. So give us strength today. Encourage our hearts, Lord, and release our faith to come up higher to receive this baptism of the Spirit and to encounter more of the gifts of the Spirit each and every day of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the first step to really experiencing this inward baptism of the Holy Spirit is to develop a personal relationship with God's Son, Jesus Christ. 2,000 years ago, Jesus came and he died on the cross for your and my sins so that our sins would be atoned for and we'd be made right with God and be able to spend eternity with God, our Father. So if you've never asked Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior, I just want to pray the simple prayer of salvation and invite Christ's Spirit to come and live in you and to be in your life. So wherever you are, if you want to bow your head and close your eyes and just repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming to die on the cross for my sins. I repent of my sins, come into my heart, I make you my Lord and Savior, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you prayed that simple prayer, the Bible says that you have been born again and that you are in the household of God for eternity and that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life in heaven, guaranteeing you that you're a citizen of heaven, that you'll spend eternity with God your Father. So welcome to the family of God. And the next step is to be water baptized and to get in a good Christian Bible-based church and Christian fellowship and read your Bible every day and tell someone, tell a pastor or tell someone you know that is a Christian that you gave your life to Christ and let them encourage you and help you in your faith journey with God. And last thing, I have a website with a lot of great resources on it. It's just my name, McCadeMarshall.com. And on McCadeMarshall.com, you can watch a lot of other Word of the Week and Word of the Month videos just like this one with different topics and different messages that will help you grow in your faith journey. And I'm also a writer, and I write and mail out newsletters every three months to my readers and viewers. So if you're not subscribed to receive newsletters, on the website, you can click on the Newsletters tab and fill out a form, and I'd be more than happy to mail you a copy of the latest newsletter, and you can also read newsletters there. And I'm a writer and an author, and I have a couple of books out. And the first book I wrote is called Tasting the Goodness of God. 
And Tasting the Goodness of God is a 31-day daily devotional I wrote to help you spend time with God every single day of the month. And you just read one devotional every day, and it takes five, maybe ten minutes to read. And it'll just help you get your mind going the right directions. And there's also thought for the day at the end of each each devotional. So if you like to journal, you can journal journal out thoughts and different things for the day's message. And it'll just help you grow in your walk with God on a daily basis. And also, I have a new book out called Breathe. And Breathe is a little longer, and it goes a little more in-depth. And breathe is about God breathing new life into your God-given dreams. And each chapter just shares different scripture and different messages of, of hope and different subjects that will really encourage you to go after your dreams and to pursue your career and your vocation and whatever God has called you to. So if you don't have breathe, you can order that on the website along with Tasting the Goodness of God. And Breathe also has uh, prayers at the end of each chapter that you can pray over yourself and pray over your loved ones. So if you want to learn how to pray scripture, Breathe is a great book for that as well. So make sure to pick up your copies on my website. I'd be more than happy to sign them and ship them to you. All right, well in closing, I just want to declare a blessing over you. I declare you are being filled with the Holy Spirit today. As you seek God every day, He is releasing more of his Holy Spirit to work the supernatural in your life. With his power at work in you, there is no obstacle too great for you to be able to overcome. You are headed higher and higher in life to new and greater levels as God leads you. In Jesus' name. Well, I love you and I'm praying for you. God bless you.